So here we are in the middle of winter, February 1st, 2024. Got a couple of months to go before we can really start riding again. So it's time to maybe think about upgrading some gear. At least I know it is for me. So I've decided to get myself a new jacket. You see it right over there. Yep, that is a Aerostitch Darien jacket. And yes, I decided to go with high vis We'll talk about that in a minute. But the jacket that's going to get replaced, well, that is this one right here. And this is my climb latitude jacket that I've had for, I don't know, six or seven years now. Now, you can't go wrong with buying a climb product, but there are a few things that have made me think about trying something else. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video, is why I decided to switch from climb and give Aerostitch a try. Now, as I said, this Climb Latitude jacket has really been a great jacket over the years. I really think it has great ventilation. It has helped keep me safe in a couple of get-offs off-road. And also, it has done a really good job of keeping me dry, at least for the most part. The last couple of years, last year in particular, we had a lot of water that I had to ride through just about on every trip that I took. And a couple of them, I got kind of wet on the inside. Now, after a while, the outer coating breaks down that helps water beat up on the Cordura. And so I've tried to revitalize that and I've had limited success with, again, getting it to be 100% waterproof again. So given that there's another problem with it, and that is that I've gotten a little bit bigger, so the jacket is a little smaller. I've been hitting the gym pretty good for the last three years, and I've actually put a couple inches on my chest. I've gone from a 44 to a 46. So now this jacket's getting a little tight for me, in particular when I try to wear an extra layer underneath it, you know, for warmth. So given those things, I decided it was time to maybe look at something else. Now, while I always liked things like being able to pin my collar back and open this up on a warm day, I like the vents in front, the vents down here that they have on your arm, right, and the vents on the side of the chest. Again, the ventilation was always really good for me, right? However, there were little things like this that always kind of bothered me, and that is that the openings for the sleeves aren't very big. So if I have to put a glove on, like this, well then I've gotta kinda, you know, work that around a little bit to get that glove on properly. And while it's not too bad if I have just the jacket on, if I have a layer underneath it, well it got kind of hard to do sometimes. And if I already have one glove on, putting it on the other side, well, again, that's a little tough too. So in comes this Darien jacket from Aerostitch. Now I decided to go with Aerostitch because they have a very good reputation among all of the motorcycle community, mainly those of us who like to get out and ride long distances and travel. All right, the Aerostitch does an amazing job at keeping everybody dry and as safe as possible uh, while they're traveling. Now, Aerostitch is a small company out of Duluth, Minnesota, and all of their garments are made there in the USA, in Duluth, right, by their uh, team of seamstresses. So that's another plus for this. Again, U.S. company, U.S. made. Now, I know some will ask why I didn't go with a one-piece suit like an R3 or the Roadcrafter. Well, that's because in my case, I'm traveling most of the time and I want to be able to walk into a restaurant or go into a museum or something, take that jacket off and hang it up somewhere, right? And not have to worry about it. Right? With the one-piece suits, then I've got to deal with the zippers and putting it on and off, you know, rolling it down and so forth if I want to go into those situations. So it's, again, just my personal preference that I would rather go with the jacket. So I went with the regular Darien jacket rather than the Darien light. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted the heavier denier material. 
The lighter version comes with a slightly less dense Cordura outer layer. So it would be more for people who are riding in hotter climates. Again, since I'm mainly riding back here in the Northeast, right, and again, I'm traveling all over the place. Again, I wanted to go with that heavier denier. And also it's gonna help me a little bit more just in case I go down. Now the folks at Aerostitch come right out and tell you that their garments are not made to be fashion statements, right? They are tools, right? Tools to help keep you safe and keep you comfortable while you're out there traveling on the motorcycle. So there are not a lot of frills here. There are a lot of useful things on here, but they don't do a lot of things, you know, to make them fancier or prettier that you might find on a lot of other jackets. And while I'm here, well, let's talk about the color. Because if you've watched my videos before, you know I have some questions about how effective high-vis gear really is. Right, but in this particular case, I decided to go ahead and give it a try. And that was because basically the Darien jacket comes in three stock colors. A black, which I didn't want, kind of a dark gray that I didn't want, and then it comes in the high-vis. So out of those three, I opted for the high vis. Now, could I have contacted them and had them custom make me a lighter gray or maybe a tan version of this jacket? Or could I have gone with the Darien Light and got some other color options? Yes, I could have done that. But I wanted the Darien full, you know, thick, heavy material, All right? So I went ahead and stuck with the, you know, three primary colors that they had. Now also, I decided that after hearing all of the people that responded to my video on high vis tell me that they have not had anybody pull out in front of them in 100,000 miles and so forth when they wear their high vis jacket. And again, I question that, not that people are not telling me the truth, but simply that, you know, this is all a matter of perception. Right? Because I have people pull out in front of me in my big Toyota truck out there all of the time. They see me coming, they still pull out in front of me. And just about every time I get out on my motorcycle, even though I have some big old yellow lights on it now, people still pull out in front of me. Now, none of those pullouts have been really close, right? Where I've had to stomp on the brakes to save my life or anything like that. Right, they've been okay because I pay attention to what's going on. So I don't know whether people count those kinds of things or not. So I'm very interested to see, as I'm wearing this jacket, along with my big bright yellow lights, do I notice any difference in the way that people respond to me while I'm riding on the bike? Again, we'll see how it goes. Now, as I said with the climb jacket, they do not put the Gore-Tex all the way down to the cuff of the sleeve or to the bottom of the jacket, right? So those areas tend to get wet, soak water up, and then again, they kind of wick water up inside the jacket. Now with the Aerostitch jacket, they take the Gore-Tex all the way to the end of the sleeves, except for a tiny little roll over here. And they do the same thing at the bottom of the jacket. So again, I'm interested to see if that makes any difference in how much water gets in those sleeves. Now also, this jacket is longer than the climb jacket by several inches. Right? And I liked that, I wanted that, because for me, the place where I get coldest the most and wettest the most is in my back, right? That low back area. So I wanted something that went down a little bit farther, again, to cover up that area and see if that helps me out. Now, speaking of keeping you dry, one thing that I'm impressed with after getting to see this jacket is that the Aerostitch has a very substantial gutter system on it. Uh, Climb has a very similar kind of system, but it's about half the width of what you see here on the Aerostitch. So we've got a very substantial gutter set over that uh, zipper right there. So that all closes up to help keep you dry. So again, I'm very interested to see how that works because that was always a weak point in the climb. Right? If you didn't have everything just buttoned up tight as you possibly could and made sure that that collar was secure, which oftentimes 
you couldn't get it secure. Again, especially if I was wearing some layer underneath it, it was really tough to keep that Velcro cl closed. So again, we'll see how this works, but I'm very encouraged that looks really nice. So putting this jacket on, you can see that it has a lot more room in it than that climb jacket has. I can move easily. So size much better for me, at least the way that I am now. All right, this is a 46, as I mentioned before. And again, I think it fits pretty true to size. And I've got plenty of room to put a layer on underneath this comfortably. Again, which is one of the things that I was really looking to do. Now, as far as ventilation goes, this does not have the same kind of ventilation that the climb that had on it, All right? I've got some pit vents right here. You can see those there. I've got some big open sleeves, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And then I can open up this collar and even zip down the front of this jacket a little bit to let air in that way. Also, there's a big exhaust vent that goes across the back. So we'll see what difference that makes when I'm out riding. Like I said, the heat doesn't really bother me all that much. I don't mind sweating a little bit. Right? But again, I do want to have some ventilation going through the jacket. Now, I do really like these sleeves, as I mentioned, because you can open them up, let some air flow in through those, which, again, if you've seen the technique that I use sometimes where you wet your LD Comfort long sleeve shirt, and then you let the air come in your sleeves, it makes a really nice air conditioning effect. So these big old sleeve openings, that's gonna really help on using that technique to keep you cool. And I mentioned how sometimes dealing with those small climb sleeves was a pain. Well, putting my glove on with these, right, is a ton easier, right? I don't have to fight to get that all around there. And there's a zipper right here on it, so I can just cinch that down like that, and then use the Velcro if I need some fine adjustment. So I can really lock it down there when I need to keep the wind and the rain out. And as I mentioned before, that Gore-Tex goes a lot further down than it did on the climb jacket. Now let's talk about pockets. So as you can see, I've got a reflective stripe here, as well as that reflective stripe that goes across the back. Right, and underneath there, I've got a little waterproof pocket with a carabiner inside it. Right, and of course in front, I've got now a big zip open pocket here. I can put stuff in as well as I have one on the other side as well. Right, along with those, I've got two little pockets that I can just use to put my hands in, like so. All right, they're not lined or anything. I can just rest my hands in here, no zippers. And then underneath those, I have two additional zippered pockets, again, down low on the jacket. So there's plenty of places to store stuff. There's also a lot of adjustability on this jacket. You have two adjustment straps here that are Velcroed to make that jacket tighter or looser as you need it. You also have some really nice adjusting straps at the waist. They're elastic in the back, so you can really bring that in, cinch it in. It feels nice and tight when you need it to be that way. And then at the bottom of the jacket, there's an elastic drawstring. If you really wanna bring that in tight, and it has a really cool uh, little retention system that I'll show you here uh, in this picture. So another thing that I really like that they've done, because it gives me the same functionality that my climb jacket had, and that is the ability to pin this collar open. They do it not with the little hooks that climb use, but they have some rare earth magnets that are here uh, in the jacket. And of course you can remove those, and if you have a pacemaker or something like that, then you don't want to use those magnets, right? But for me, again, that's gonna really be a nice feature to help me keep that collar open, because I like to do that to keep myself cool. So now the jacket is a little bit stiff right now, but I expected that. Again, it's a pretty heavy material. All right, so probably for the first season or so, 
it's gonna take that to loosen up and get really comfortable. But to be honest with you, it's not bad though. I mean, my climb was pretty stiff. Uh, not this model that I've been showing you, but my original model of the Latitude jacket. That was pretty stiff when I first got it as well. Probably a little stiffer than this is. So again, this is not bad overall. And uh, said, I'm looking forward to using it. Now, as far as the quality of the workmanship, so far I've gone over this jacket and it seems really, really well made. You can tell that people are really doing a great job and trying to keep this jacket, you know, well made and well put together. There are a couple of spots that probably aren't as finished quite as nicely as you might find on something like a climb, right, up around the collar, for example. But again, that's not that big of a deal to me at all. What I want is for the jacket to function, right? And I see nothing that is going to cause this jacket not to function properly. Before we get into the details of how much this jacket cost, we also need to talk about the armor that comes with it. Because right now the jacket has shoulder pads and elbow pads. There is no back pad that comes with this jacket. You can buy that additionally if you want it, but again, it does not come with the jacket. So I did not buy that. I have some other options for me that I'm again looking into. We'll see what happens. Now also the Armor is in, held in place a little bit differently than you would normally find. On something like the Climb, they have a liner inside the jacket and then inside that liner are little pockets that the armor is held in place. Pretty much everybody who has one knows what I'm talking about. Right, this they don't you do that with, right? There is no internal liner for this jacket. It's just the Gore-Tex and the Cordura. Right, and then you have some Velcro that is gonna hold your pouches for the armor in place. So I have read some things about the armor over time kind of moves around a little bit. For right now, it seems to be pretty secure for me, but obviously it's brand new. So that brings us to cost of this jacket. Well, as you can expect, a fully lined Gore-Tex jacket that's handmade for you here in the United States, comes with a bit of a price tag. Right now they're listing the Darien jacket like I have for $727 on the Aerostit site. Now I bought the jacket during their Christmas sale so I got $70 off of that or I paid $654 before taxes. Right. So again, I thought that's right in line with what a Climb or you know a, a Revit or some other high quality gear is gonna cost you. And again, this is made here in the US, again, handmade for you, which brings me to the point that you may have to wait a little bit, right? Sometimes they have your sizes in stock, the sizes and the colors that you want, but very often they don't. They will have to put it in line and literally make it by hand before shipping out to you. So that was my case. So it took me almost 10 weeks from the time that I ordered it to the time it arrived in my house. So. Remember that, order them during the winter <laughs> so that you have time to get them for the spring like I did. If you wait till the last minute, well, chances are you'll be riding half the season before you can get your jacket. All right, guys, so that's it. That's my introduction to this new jacket and my initial impressions of it. Again, I'm really looking forward to using it this year and seeing how it performs while I'm out there riding and especially when I run into some rain. Now, I did go out and get another jacket that couldn't go over the top of this, just in case, because, well, some of the rain that I ran into this year, I just want to be prepared for it if it happens again. So, all right, guys, ride safe. Keep squeezing that lemon.